What's going on, everybody? C4 here, and it is time to talk about some player grades for the Philadelphia Eagles. 31-3 victory over the Chicago Bears. Is there such a thing as an ugly blowout? I don't know. If there is, this was that. You know, we play Seattle, we play LA in the next couple weeks, and if we played like how we did against the Bears, against those two teams, we are going to get smoked. This was a very, very ugly game, and it comes back to one of the only negatives I can find in this 10-1 team. And that is Deuce Daly. But we'll go to that in just one second. First thing I need to let you know is that later tonight, because the Sunday night is nothing spectacular, I'll be live streaming uh, the Philadelphia Eagles Connected franchise. But we'll probably play two or three weeks on that. So if you want to just pop in there, talk about the Eagles, talk about all things that happen Sunday football, uh, tune in. It'll probably be around... 9 8 30 9 p.m eastern somewhere around then so if you guys want to pop in that would be cool so let's bring it back to the player grades um uh, this is my fourth time recording this because i go on big ass tangents in the end of the day it's just like you know how negative can i be about a 10 and 1 t so we'll end with it we'll get the grades finished and then i'll finish off with my tangent about deuce daily and and kind of the downside of doug peterson uh so let's do the grades yeah so at quarterback spot carson wentz 23 of 36 for 227 yards three passing touchdowns on the day carson wentz was spectacular he's getting an a plus he did everything right had a couple off throws um, but that was credit to the Bears defense, man. This Bears team is really, really solid. They had three wins on the year. They're better than the record. And the three wins on the year were against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who's debatably the best team in the AFC. You have the Panthers, who is a wild card team. Oh, and they beat, um, who else did they beat? Ravens. Ravens as well. Ravens are another team probably going to go in the AFC wild card. So their three wins have been against very good teams, and they play most teams close. So the fact that the Eagles dominated them, that's exactly the narrative that you want to see as an Eagle fan. All the people that are saying, oh, the Eagles haven't beat anyone good yet. Well, I mean, even though the fact that the Bears have been able to beat mostly only playoff teams, when Eagles play these inferior teams, we spank them. And even though this was an ugly game, when you beat a team 31-3, to that is a spanking. So credit to the Eagles, credit mostly to Carson Wentz, who had another perfect day. You got to see Nick Foles in there at the end, again reiterating the fact that we have tremendous depth uh, in case anything ever happens. We're never going to jinx it, we're never going to say it. But I like to have Nick Foles on the roster, even though he's a little expensive. But A-plus for Carson Wentz. He is the MVP right now. And if anyone on your social media is, is trying to make the hot take, clearly Tom Brady is the MVP, everybody. Block and delete. Move on. All right, looking at the running backs, not great. Gary Blunt, 15 carries, 97 yards. Wentz had 5 carries, 29 yards. Clement had 4 carries, 27. Ajay, 5 for 26. We have a fumble from Ajay that luckily was recovered in the end zone from Nelson Aguilar for a touchdown. We have two fumbles. From LeGarrette Blunt, both were very, very bad. I have no idea why LeGarrette Blunt uh, still remained the lead back. I mean, 97 yards on the day. He had a couple big runs. He straight up jumped over a guy, 6.5 yards per carry. But there needs to be accountability. You can't, you have to, okay, we'll bring it back at the end. Okay, we're going to get through the grades. Focus, C4. So running backs, the running backs as a whole here today, they're getting a C plus, C plus. They, you know, luckily their fumbles didn't cost us, and we got lucky on a couple of them. Uh, look at the receivers. Uh, these guys here getting A. Uh, Zach Ertz, 10 catches, 103 yards, and a touchdown. Our first 100-yard receiver on the season. Alshon in his revenge game. Five catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. Aguilar had three catches, 32 yards, two touchdowns on the day. Uh, we saw a little Mac Hollins. Man, Corey Clement is awesome. I love having Corey Clement on the roster. It's going to be interesting to see, man, next year when Darius Sproles comes back, if he comes back, you know, I think Clement deserves more snaps. There's no way. There's no other way to put it. Every time he gets the ball, he's making plays. I think you need to find more ways. Take less carries from LeGarrette Blunt and distribute those to JJ and Corey Clement. But receivers, I'm giving them an A. Great day, especially for Zach Ertz and Alshon Jeffrey. Maybe maybe throw an Aguilar there who kind of saved Jai's ass on the recovered fumble. Uh, special teams were good. Elliott made all of his kicks, which was great to see. Had a couple bad kickoffs, but other than that, special teams were fine. Uh, and defense, A+. Plus. Defense was spec. Spectacular. Best defensive performance we've probably done all year. Uh, they didn't have a first down until like later in the third. And they didn't actually half, I would say even more than half their yards came once literally all of our st second stringers were in. Um, so credit to them. Brandon Graham, five tackles, had a sack on the day. Darby had five tackles. Another spectacular performance from him. Uh, interception from Malcolm Jenkins, which unfortunately he fumbled. An interception from Corey Graham. Uh, we have a sack from Fletcher Cox. Uh, Jalen Mills had a couple big plays. Razul Douglas had an interception. That was a really, really good catch. Really good read. Unfortunately, he bobbled it. You know, he didn't complete the catch. Uh, Razul Douglas. I made the thing on Twitter. Uh, the, you could debatably say Razul Douglas is playing with the third best corner. I think him and Tredavious White are fairly similar. I think Trey White's numbers look a little bit better uh, because he's a full-time starter. And he's made some great plays. That's no shot at him. But I think, 
I'd give Trey White 3A and then Rasul Douglas 3B. I think their play styles are, and, and as far as like when they're in the game making playmaking abilities, really, really close, obviously behind Marilyn Humphrey and Marshawn Lattimore. You know, to make it, that's a hot take. Remember, less of a hot take. You just have Rasul at 4 and Trey White at 3. Uh, but defense A+, plus, very, very good job from this defense. Again, like I said, man, um, game ball, I don't know. I'd probably have to still give it to, you know, I'll give it to Zach Ertz. Just because some of those 10 catches, like four or five of those were really, really tough contested catches that he was able to make. So, plus he's our first 100-yard receiver of the day. But, you know, you probably could share it. Like, just share it like how cute Dak and Zeke were last year during the Rookie of the Year Award. I, I think you could just sh split it down the middle and give it to half Wentz and half to Zach Ertz on the day. So, the last point I want to make is the player coach. Doug Peterson is a player's coach. What happens with a player coach? You obviously get great locker room morale, which is clearly what the Philadelphia Eagles have right now. But the downside is player coaches, as opposed to a Chip Kelly strategy guy, uh, they, they stick with players for far too long. They, they have this, it's almost like, you know, you know how off, like they usually script the first couple of plays of the game. Most of the drives are scripted, right, for the, for the offense in the first half. A player coach feels like they script their depth chart, and their depth chart has to stay this certain way. I've committed to these players, and we're going to see it out. That's what happens with a player coach. A strategic coach will make a change when something's not going right, regardless of how popular it may be. And with Doug Peterson, we've seen that. We've seen that with Isaac Siamalu forcing uh, an offensive line when he was playing very, very bad. We saw it even when they made the switch from Siamalu. They had Wisniewski and Chance Warmack, and they did a weird offensive guard rotation, clearly, when Wisniewski was the better player. But it seemed like, you know, he he, he said something to Warmack. Warmack started out ahead of Wiz, and then he it just, you know, until it was so abundantly clear that he had to make the change, it was just like, why aren't you doing this? Why are you so sticklery? And it's because, you know, he's a player's coach. He doesn't want to upset the, the, the yin and yang in the locker room. And... I'm not really shooting at Doug here. I'm more shooting at Deuce Staley because Deuce Staley, also a player's coach. And what it looks like with Deuce is he has this defined notion of LeGarrette Blunt's one, JJ is two, and Corey Clement is three. I don't know if that's trying to keep LeGarrette Blunt happy because we were trading for JJ midseason. You want to keep all three of these guys happy or, or what is going on. But after that first LeGarrette Blunt fumble, if you have that competitive of a running back trio, a stable of running backs, if you fumble... You need to take a seat. You need to move maybe not all the way to the back of the line, but next guy up. You need to have a fire on his ass knowing that they make a, if they make a mistake, if they have a lapse in judgment, someone else is going to start eating their snaps. So that doesn't happen again. What happened after LeGarrette Bunn fumbled it? Oh, no, give him the next drive. Give him, you know, let's get him back in there again. That's a player-coach mentality. LeGarrette Blunt still finished with 97 yards, but he had another fumble late in the game while he was supposed to do what he's brought in to do, and that is kill off games. That is move between the tackles. LeGarrette Blunt had, even though he had 97 yards, and he sounds incredibly, you're trying to find negatives when you're crapping on a guy that had 97 yards, but those two fumbles, if that was Seattle, that would, we would be losing. We would have lost that game. Seattle would have punished us. Russell Wilson would have made uh, and got some points off of those turnovers. You need to have accountability. You need to be able to say, all right, it's not working. Sit your ass down. No, don't fumble the goddamn ball. Jay is getting your snaps now. That is how you have to handle this approach. You don't need to be, oh, no, no, pat him on the back. Get out there. Here's, an, here's a, you know, your special flavor Gatorade, LeGarrette. Everything's fine. No, especially when you have these guys right here. We have killers. Corey Clement, every snap he makes, it seems like positive yards. Jay Ajayi, explosive downfield. Even though Ajayi did have the fumble later on, it still was well after the first initial LeGarrette Blunt fumble. So, I'm just going to say, if we didn't have so many player coaches and we had the odd guy that was able to make a stern decision to have a little bit of a backbone, I think we'd have a little bit healthier competition for our running backs. But all in all, like I said, I understand that this is incredibly nitpicking, especially that we're 10-1, and especially because our running backs still, outside of the fumbles, they were moving the ball down and we're getting lucky with a couple of them. But uh, if I had to find a negative... Let's just put it this way. If I was trying to find a negative from this game, it would be the fact that Deuce Daly is a player's coach and not and he personally personally isn't taking the way I would with our running backs. But all in all, guys, Philadelphia Eagle won. 31 to 3. Dominant victory. We got the Seahawks next week in primetime. I cannot wait for that. Let me know what you guys felt about this game in the comment section below. Smash the like button if you are hyped that we're the number one team in the NFL and we still continue to have the reigning, defending, week 10 MVP champion in Carson Wentz. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new. Until next time, guys, it's C4 saying peace out.